jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes There's absolutely nothing for you to do This is all about relaxing body and your mind and allowing the natural process of drifting asleep to occur the natural process of drifting asleep because falling asleep just like relaxing is not something that you can force and an easy way to remember this to remind yourself that you not to try and force falling asleep or not to try and force yourself to relax because that actually causes pain emotional pain it causes discomfort cause anger, uh, may cause you to start, you know, calling yourself names and why can't I do this and I want to fall asleep and I'm this and I'm that because I can't fall asleep and uh, you know, which is going to get in the way of sleeping and relaxing. So an easy way to remember to never try and force it. To remember that you can't force it. It's something that just needs some time. You can't force it. All you can do is allow it. You can wish for it, want it, you know, need it, but you can't force it. So it's really a case of allowing the process to happen naturally. So a good way to remember it is and this will stick in your mind never force a fart remember not to try and force things now there are background sounds I'm using the new microphone setup so I'm hoping that there will be less of the background sounds being mic but I can't be certain of that but it's okay because in this recording we're going to practice letting go and not trying to force it we're going to practice getting into the zone of just accepting that this happens and it has to happen naturally So all I'm going to ask you to do is lie down on your bed, if you haven't already done so, and just close your eyes. What I would suggest is maybe get yourself into the position. away or you can do it in parts so sometimes I like to just lie down on my back you know my body starts to relax my head touches a pillow my mind starts to slow down and I actually get in touch with the pleasure of the body's my body being supported by the bed sure you've got a comfortable bed and I know that's not always possible I've slept in many uncomfortable beds over the years but try and do something to make it more comfortable 
as I said, sometimes I'll lay on my back just to experience the relaxation. And then I will lie on my side, usually my left side or my right side, because I don't sleep on my back. I sleep on my side. So that, in a sense, gives my body, you know, the muscle memory of my body, basically a reminder, you know, like, this is what happens next. And this is Especially if you're used to telling yourself to go to sleep. Or if you're reminding yourself that you have to be up at a certain time. And your mind's telling you or reminding you about all the things that you need to do tomorrow. And how important it is for you to fall asleep instantly. And then the images of how you're going to feel tomorrow if you don't get enough sleep. None of that is helpful. None of it is helpful at all. If anything, it's, well, it is the opposite. The opposite of the natural process of falling asleep. Because when your body relaxes completely and your mind slows down, even if you try to stay awake, you'd fall asleep. Because that's what naturally happens when you lie on your bed in your sleeping position. As I said, you've got the muscle memory. And you might have been sleeping in the same position every night for the last 40 years or whatever. So your body and mind knows what to do next. So when you, so for example, I lie on my left side and I cuddle the, I cuddle the duvet, that's what I do. My body knows it's time to just drift off to sleep. It doesn't think, oh, it's time to go and play some tennis. No. Because I've never done that before I go and play tennis. And I don't play tennis, I don't know why. Well, that's not a good example. Or, you know, I don't lay there, turn on my left side, cuddle, cuddle a duvet and think, alright, time to cook some food, or well, it's time to go to the shops. No. It's time to go to sleep. Time to just drift off. Because if you just decide nothing else other than you're lying down on your bed and that's where you're going to stay. That's where you're going to stay. You're just in your bed now and you're relaxing. And you're just going to enjoy re feeling relaxed. Enjoy having your eyes closed because it's nice think about it, I don't know about you, but I've got my eyes open, apart from the blinking, you know, all day long, I love closing my eyes, just even for short periods of time, but lying down on my bed, closing my eyes, knowing that I don't need to open them at all for maybe hours and hours, it's nice. Because when your eyelids and your eyes start to relax, then the other muscles of your body start to relax. Basically, the most relaxed you'll ever be during the day, you know, during a 24 hour period, the most relaxed you'll ever be is when you're asleep. There's always going to be times or 
also when you're asleep, when your brain is active. But physically, you're going to be the most relaxed during the sleep. At a level that would be quite difficult to reach. I mean, it might be possible, I don't know. It's hard to compare because we're asleep. That's the fact. Your muscles relax, almost melt into the bed. And you can get a sense of that when you listen to me and you have the guided relaxation and you start to notice that actually when your eyelids are closed, the rest of your body does seem to follow the lead, seems to follow that relaxation, and it does feel nice, and if you just lie there with your eyes closed, without wanting anything, you would fall asleep, if you lie there with your eyelids closed and you wanted to try and stay awake, you would fall asleep. Just in the same way as if you sat in a really comfortable chair that supported your body and you just pushed the chair towards a wall and faced the wall. And that's all you had to look at. You would fall asleep. It's just the way it is. So actually falling asleep is the most natural thing. It's so easy. As long as you're not giving yourself a hard time. like anything, if you're doing something that you're really good at, it could be, let's say, playing a violin or anything, we're all good at something, There's something that you excel at, that you can, or something that you just can do easily, now you try and do that when someone's shouting at you, when someone's being abusive verbally. When someone's giving you a hard time, if you're walking on a tightrope, I don't do that myself, but some people do. If that person had people either side of them shouting, make sure you don't fall, make sure you don't fall, just in their ear the whole time, they're probably going to fall. Negativity is very powerful. But so is positivity. It's just in this world, there seems to be a lot of, a lot more free negativity than there is positivity. Sometimes with positivity, we have to actually create it ourselves and be responsible for it and it doesn't seem to be so easily shared around unlike negativity which is passed around almost like a gift so when you're lying down on your bed this is your time it's nothing to do with anybody else and any negativity that other people have, they can keep it. It does not belong in your bedroom. That negativity does not belong in your bed. In fact, that negativity does not belong in your head, or your body, or even your life. That's other people's negativity, it's not yours. is why small children that are generally happy in life they can sleep really easily because they haven't they had that bombardment of other people's negativity and they ex- 
expect to fall asleep. In fact, more often than not, a small child will try not to fall asleep because they want to stay awake, to be part of things. You ever see a, a small child literally try and keep their eyes open and keep nodding off? They try and, but they can't because sleep in the same way if you sat on a toilet long enough you'll end up going to the toilet or if you sat in a bath long enough the water will go cold it just has to it doesn't matter how warm or hot the water is in that bath I do, you wouldn't get into one that's too hot you know, a nice temperature. You lay in there long enough. Of course, you wouldn't do that whilst listening to a recording. But the water would go cold. Just in the same way as if you lie down in your bed long enough. You will fall asleep. asleep. So I'm going to count from 10 to 1 and just let